Hey guys, I've got another distribution review for you today. Today we're going to be taking a look at Solus. Now this is one of those distribution reviews where I take a Linux distribution, I install it onto my laptop, which is my secondary machine, but I do use it on a daily basis. Uh, it's just not the machine that, you know, like everything rests upon. Uh, and yeah, I, uh, I use it sort of day in, day out for a while and let you guys know how I've been getting on with it. The short review of this distribution is that it's brilliant. I have found very little, if anything, wrong with it. It's really good. Now, there's a lot of hype around Solus, and a lot of people whose opinions I respect say that Solus is, is a really good distribution. Uh, I've tried it out in virtual machines before, but I've never tried it on bare metal. It installed fine, or the hardware was picked up fine. Uh, wireless, fine. I know in the screen cap here, you can see that it's got a wired connection, but I have tested out wireless. It does work flawlessly. It looks beautiful. It comes with, as you can see here, the um, the arc theme, which is it's a flat theme, if you like flat themes. Um, but it looks great. It looks beautiful. Um, this is the Budgie desktop. The Budgie desktop, although maybe not my my first choice of desktop, it's still a really good desktop. So the menu system, you've just got a very basic uh, panel here with more like commonly used applications. So you can see some of my more commonly appli uh, used applications uh, near the top there. Um, it has a really good software selection. Everything that I needed was right there in the repository in the App Center ready to be installed. In fact, I'll pull up the App Center now. Uh, it looks really good. It's got a really good App Center. Look at that, right? It's got all your categories nicely laid out. You've got your updates there, you've got installed, you've even got third party applications. Uh, you can install, you know, me multimedia codecs. Um, there's gaming. Like all this stuff, it's it's really easy just to uh, to install install on. Uh, you can install Steam there, that's just the, the package is there, but you've got a few selected games. Now, as I browse the Software Center, it does look like there are fewer applications in general, but I have a feeling a lot of that's down to the fact that because Solus was built from the ground up, it's an independent based distribution. It's not based on Ubuntu, it's not based on anything Red Hat or anything like that. It's a completely in independent distribution. And that appears to have allowed the developers a bit of a blank canvas, a, a you know this this idea that they can do whatever they want. So they've you know they clearly have just not included some you know antiquated old stuff that seems to get included into distributions as a matter of course, as a matter of tradition almost. But they uh, definitely have, have developed this with a degree of clarity in mind, a degree of user you know uh, user friendliness for the end user in mind. So they don't overwhelm you with, I don't know, what seem to be too many packages. Maybe they've taken out packages that are only ever used as dependencies or what have you. But uh, you can look in the, like the multimedia section as well. That's pretty good. It's got a good selection of um, video editors, players, that kind of stuff. Uh, what we've got under video software, cheese, uh, gnome twitch, you know, webcams, Caden Live. All of this software, including Caden Live, looks great as well. One of the great things about this distribution, theming consistency is perfect. I have not opened an application that looks bad. And I think part of this is that they, they just make sure that the software that they include in their repositories is properly embedded into their system. Part of that, I think, was down to the fact that when they built the Solus uh, distribution, they also built with it the Budgie desktop and, and they had full creative control over how that desktop would interact. And if Budgie is going to be continue to be the flagship desktop environment for this distribution and they work in that kind of tandem then that's going to be great as well but we do see Solus bringing out a uh, gnome version and a mate version i've tried out the mate version in a virtual machine that looks good as well so if you like what i say about Solus but perhaps aren't convinced about the budgie desktop try the mate desktop it looks uh, it's great it's great in fact to be honest if i was going to use this as a long-term kind of thing Maybe it's me feeling more comfortable with the Mate desktop because I've used it for a longer period of time. I'd be happy with Budgie. Like, I've had zero bugs. I think that's also something that I should point out. Zero bugs, zero windows saying that something's crashed or anything like that. Everything has worked perfectly. I can't, I, nothing has gone wrong. That's the thing. It's... Um, I wish I... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for something to critique it for. I've got one little criticism, which I'll get to at some point, but... It's you know that look at that terminal that look, terminal looks great. Uh, what have I got there? I think I have opened up uh, Libre Writer. So that's Libre Writer. Often with Libre Libre Writer, depending uh, regardless of your uh, of the toolkit that your desktop environment is based on, um, Libre Office can still look pretty ugly at times. This looks fine. It's properly embedded with the uh, the Breeze theme. It comes with Firefox as the default browser. Uh, 
However, and this is my criticism, there doesn't appear to be Chromium in the repositories, the open source um, compilation of Google Chrome. Now, Google Chrome is readily available and easily installable in the third party software down there. In fact, you can get Google Chrome, Development Branch, and Beta. You can also install Flash, it's as easy as installing that. I didn't bother installing Flash. Um, InSync, so if you've got Google Drive, this InSync application is perfect. Um, I've used it when I used to use Google Drive. Uh, it works perfectly. You do have to pay for it, and for, uh, well, I say unfortunately, I have zero problem supporting um, that kind of software for Linux. But uh, yeah, you do have to. It's not very much. It's, uh, le it's like less than $10. Um, Skype as well. Skype for Linux beta, so you get the new proper updated Skype, Viber. So even the, and you've got WPS Office Suite. Uh, I'm, you know, it's, it's not one for me, but I know that uh, some of you guys like it. Also Spotify there. You've got, you know, oh, and there's Google, the Google, uh, Google Talk plugin. So yeah, you've got your third party stuff there. Android Studio, if you want to develop for Android, I guess. Um, and, and there's plenty of software in the uh, native repositories as well. So yeah, the only complaint I have is that the Chromium, the open source variant of Google Chrome, is not available in the repositories. If I wanted an open source browser, what browsers do they have? Let's have a look. It's, it's, um, it's a selection. So you've got GNOME Web, that's not too bad. Uh, you've got Firefox, you've got Lynx, Lynx, Midori, Opera. I don't think that, that's not open source, but uh, as I understand it's still pretty good from people I know who do use it. Cupzilla, Cute Browser, Vivaldi Snapshot, Vivaldi Stable, W3M. So you've got like a decent selection of browsers there. So I'm not complaining, you know, I'm not, you know, it's not turning out its pockets and saying it doesn't have any browsers. Uh, and you've got, oh, news and RSS readers, what kind of stuff. Uh, okay, so you've only got Liferia and Newsbiter. So a little, like a little light on the RSS things, but, um, but really, like they've got all the bases covered. Uh, email clients, oh, they've got a decent set of email clients. Oh, by the way, as of recording this video yesterday, email was 35 years old. So, um, just a bit of a tidbit of a fact in there for you. So, uh, yeah, I'm basically just swooning over. I've even got my, my Dropbox. Uh, the notifications are great as well. So basically, these notifications work very in a very similar way to Android. Is that if you get an application, uh, if you get a uh, notification, it, it turns that little bell icon red, and then it just stacks it up in the uh, in the list here that you you activate. That's brilliant. It means you don't get annoying pop-ups every time some background task has been completed or what have you, but it does like give you some kind of indication. It does let you know. That's really good. It's the best of both worlds, and I want every desktop environment to adopt that. That's I, I think that's great. That's brilliant. Love it. It means that, like, you can get lot. It means I'm free to get lots of desktop application notifications without having to be di constantly distracted by it. So something I would thoroughly like to see rolled out in other uh, in, in other desktop environments. Performance is great. This is a entry level, low end ish uh, laptop, but it works fine. I've had zero performance issues. I've not been doing anything particularly strenuous with it. I have uh, done video conferencing on it. I think that's the most strenuous thing that I've done on it. Uh, does it come with backgrounds? I've forgotten now. I, I think I picked this background out of a selection. So, uh, what have we got here? Yeah, these are all included by Budgie. Some of these are quite nice as well. Oh, I like the uh, the autumn one. Not really autumn yet, so. And then, uh, yeah. Cool, but there we go. Yeah, that's a nice, so it comes with some nice desktop background wallpaper as well. So. I think, and I think, I think that illustrates my point about this entire distribution perfectly. Is that it's polished and like it, the attention to detail is great. Like it's not, no, it's not even that I haven't had a bug. I haven't had any bug. I haven't even had, you know, a, a, a glimpse that this is not a completely polished, professional, and dare I say it, near perfect distribution. So if there was anything I could, you know, criticism I could level at it, it's first of all, it's the Chromium. I'd like, I'd like to see that included. I know that it's, uh, I've heard that it's a real pain to compile. So, um, so maybe that might be why. And to be honest, it's it's the minorest of minor criticism. And if it is a you know if it is a pain in the bum to to compile and get on the budgie operating system, and you know if it is giving the developers grief, then fine. You know I'll I'll, that's, that, I'll you know I'll take that as it is. Like you've given you you know Chrome is easy to install, Firefox is easy to install. You've got you know m most of the other sort of bases covered. There's other browsers available. So yeah, fi you know that's. Fringe criticism of that, and the 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 other one is a potential criticism that there the software availability because it is a 
you know, they, they see, they, they've designed everything from the ground up themselves, they don't have the same sort of outreach and they don't have the same sort of name recognition and brand recognition that someone like Ubuntu would. So you don't get, you know, every other project you know, who are doing a Linux port under the sun, uh, porting specifically for you. However, it does seem that in a lot of cases, the developers and maintainers have taken it upon themselves, taken that responsibility upon themselves to get uh, popular software in the distribution. So there's that. So, um, like, I didn't need any software. I didn't find, my, find myself, you know, moving to a different computer or moving to a different operating system to use a piece of software. The software that, that is installed on, or the software that is on Budgie works great, and it, it covers everything that I need. So I can't, I can't point to an example of, of something that's partic that is particularly missing, but it does just, it just sort of feels that it doesn't have as many packages as Ubuntu, but maybe that's entirely subjective, and maybe their efforts to, to decluster a distribution, maybe this is what it what it should feel like. Maybe it does feel like, you know, well, you know, maybe, maybe it's just this withdrawal from clutter, I guess. Anyway, great distribution. I really can't fault it, seriously. Um, I don't think I've heard anyone speak badly of it, but again, it's not a distribution we discuss too commonly on this channel, which it's a shame, it seems, because we've been, you know, um, I always thought of it as a good distribution. Now I know for sure. Uh, oh, also one thing. I was quite annoyed that I believe uh, Linux Mint Cinnamon um, turned on Bluetooth every time you booted up your computer. And even if you turned off Bluetooth, once the computer booted up, you rebooted and then Bluetooth would be on again. Uh, I turned off Bluetooth day one because I never use it and it's still off now. So... Um, it's intuitive and it works. And also, as, as well, uh, I often use KeyPass X to uh, as a, as a yardstick to measure how uh, well Qt four applications look in an environment. But this, instead of including KeyPass X, they include the I think it's the community version of it, which is KeyPass X C. And if you go into the about section, you'll see that this is built against Qt five. Um, yeah, QT591. So, it will look, so there's that. It, this isn't in QT4. It, it seems that everything here is built on QT5. And, you know, when, when they control their repositories, because they're an independent distribution, those are the things, you know, like you do have more control over how applications look in that way. You do get more say over the final rounded polished look. So, uh, yeah, I gotta say with Solus, like, you know, my reservations were that it's a reasonably new distribution and new distributions are never as smooth as they'd like to be. But, you know, Solus has been around for a bit now. Yeah, brilliant, good. So that's enough of me uh, swooning over Solus. Uh, I do recommend you guys try it out. Uh, if you've got a spare machine, virtual machine, uh, it like I say, I I'm sure there is something wrong with it. But in my my time since the last video, and, and like I say, I've been dis I've been testing this pretty much since the day after my last video went up. So so yeah, uh, I I think any distribution which I try on this machine now is going to be a step down. Which yeah, this is a tough act to follow, certainly so. Anyway, that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.